Hi and welcome to the next video in uh, V-Ray for Maya. This one's going to focus on the V-Ray frame buffer and uh, we're going to touch a little bit on the, the previous video, the Niederhorst settings. Um, this scene is set up basically with a dome light. Um, I'll sh quick show you plane, you've got the uh, lounge chair and uh, a V-Ray light dome. Now let's take a look at the settings. You'll notice that they are essentially the neater horse settings that we we went over last time. We've got uh, full adaptive. Under indirect, we have uh, brute force and light cache. The light cache is sub divs is set approximately to the width of the image we're going to render, and uh, use glossy light cache for glossy rays is on. And under V-Ray color mapping, we have linear multiply the gamma of 2.2 and linear workflow enabled. Um, so this is a this will be a, our linear workflow setup. And uh, the last thing to make sure of is to use the V-Ray frame buffer. All right. So before we go over the frame buffer in depth, let's get a uh, let's get a render going. You'll notice um, that we actually I'm going to switch over to fixed rate because as you remember in the previous video. Uh, I suggested switching between adaptive DMC and fixed rate for production versus preview render. So let's take a look at a preview render and how that will work. So uh, one other quick note is that uh, this layout has the Maya frame buffer showing and that's just so you can access some of the controls which are handy like redo previous render and snapshots and, and, and other such things. It's just handy to have it around. So let's render the perspective view. So that rendered very quickly. Um, you can see it's very rough and blocky and noisy, but it gives you a very good sense of, how, of what the final image is going to look like. And to get an idea of how long it took to render, you'll see in the V-Ray frame buffer, which pops up as a floating window, there's a little down arrow, and you can view your stamp controls. A stamp is just an overlay with any variables you want to set. Um, the basic variables are pretty much the most useful. So you've got information as to what version of V-Ray we're using and the render time. So this took 14 seconds to render. A uh, very nice preview time for a simple machine. Just to let you know, I'm on a, a pretty old quad-core machine, a Q6600, so really nothing special. Quick switch over to the uh, adaptive DMC and something closer to production. I don't need to do production for this uh, video, so a 0.02 will give us a very nice but slightly noisy image. So uh, you can instigate a new render right from the V-Ray frame buffer, or in an older version of V-Ray, this won't be there, so you can instigate a new render from the Maya frame buffer. So you can see that resulted in a uh, much nicer render, like slightly noisy, but that's fine for this, and uh, at 41 seconds. So let's do one more render to show you a quick feature of the V-Ray frame buffer, and we'll go all the way up to production settings. So we'll go up to uh, 0.01. Instigate a new render, and you'll see this button here is lets us track the mouse while rendering, so wherever we have the mouse pointed, you'll uh, clean render that particular area priority. That's very handy for when you just want to see a very specific area, and rather fun too. So the production render finished, and we're at 1 minute 25 seconds for this. There's uh, the tiniest bit of noise still in the image that you could sample out by going even lower on the threshold to say a 0.05 but we really don't need to push that right now. So let's move on to the features of the V-Ray frame buffer. So the uh, V-Ray frame buffer has quite a quite a few tools and uh, the first thing we're, we should discuss is the sRGB button. You'll notice it's toggled on here. Let's talk, turn off that mouse tracking feature but the sRGB button is on which enables us to view our linear workflow output 
in a sRGB monitor friendly way. So it's applying a basic gamma correction curve to display a linear image, which is generally not displayable on an sRGB mo monitor. It's applying that display curve and enabling us to see what it really looks like properly on the sRGB monitor. Without it, this is what our linear image looks like directly. And when we save the image under, with the uh, save feature and save it as an EXR, um, you'll get this linear image without any gamma or any controls that we've, or any preview settings that we uh, enable here. None of that would be baked into the image, which is what we want. We want a pure linear image so that we can color correct it in post correctly. Another feature in uh, the V-Ray frame buffer is this handy pull down to show all the different channels. Now, I, be, before we started this scene, I've set up the scene uh, with some mats. So let's step through. So we go see our alpha channel, pretty standard. Um, I enabled a render channel for Z-depth and uh, some multi mats. The multi mats are based on the materials we've set up. So we have quite a few different wood materials, which is why some slats look darker or lighter and have different grain than others. And uh, I just assign different material IDs to those different materials so that we can treat those separately in post. So the multi-mat, we'll go over the uh, multi-mat materials in more detail later in the uh, render elements video. Um, so it's really handy to be able to step through those in the frame buffer. So the other controls here are, uh, you know, just toggle on your alpha, back to your color mode, pretty standard. You can view it without any color whatsoever and uh, save your image, which I already showed you. And uh, this will link your frame buffer directly to PD Player, which is another product from Chaos Group, which won't get into here. And this is your render last button, which is the same as the button in uh, the Maya frame buffer here. So the uh, controls on the bottom here, um, the first control is uh, to show the color corrections. There's a good number of, of uh, controls here to color correct your image in the frame buffer. Um, any color corrections you apply here will not be baked into any image that you save. It's just a way to preview um, color corrections as you intend to do them in post and a way for you to make sure that what you're rendering here you're capable of pushing in post to where you need it to be. So let's uh, let's check out the exposure control which is the first top slider. The uh, You'll see it doesn't do anything until you toggle on uh, or enable the exposure control. Um, the crazy colors you're seeing here are it's a pre-visualization of clamped colors or any color that's out of range. So that's what the next button over does. It toggles that on and off. So now you have uh, an exposure control, full float exposure. You can uh, dial down brights and find just the right exposure value for you. Um, you can view another way of viewing clamped colors. The next button over is the info or pixel information button. It will, with your right mouse button, you can select any pixel in the uh, scene and it will report back your all your float 16 and equivalent 8-bit and web color versions. Handy sometimes, I don't tend to use it very much. Uh, the next control is a, a toggle again like the exposure correction, but this enables the curve correction here. Um, curve correction can be very handy to uh, really apply more dramatic corrections to your image. So you can bring down your shadows and this is where you'll get more custom controls to try to imitate the look uh, you want to do in post. Uh, here you can also, if you happen to have a lookup table in uh, your pipeline, you can load up a LUT and uh, it will use that to preview in your V-Ray frame buffer. So another very handy feature. So let's turn off curve controls and exposure control and uh, you'll see that brings us back to our image neutral. Uh, the next button over would be pixel aspect ratio if you happen to be doing a rendering for um, NTSC video and you're using a 0.9 pixel aspect ratio or or some such 
that will stretch out your image or, or squeeze it as needed. And the other two are stereo images and very specialized controls. If you happen to have anaglyph glasses, um, for me to view this properly, I would, I would have to render out a, uh, a specific stereo image. So this isn't going to do much unless I've a specific setup, uh, set up a stereo camera. But there are very quick ways to preview that for stereo. A last little mention is uh, this region render up at the top. While this is very handy and you can drag a region and render that area, this uh, state is saved. So I've seen many uh, people get into production and accidentally leave that button toggled and uh, send an image uh, render to the farm and the farm will only render this small region. So I would recommend anyone in Maya production to not use this region render button ever. Instead, instigate a region render from the Maya frame buffer. That state does not save. So if I want to render a simple region, I'll drag it into Maya frame buffer, click render, and you'll see the V-Ray frame buffer handles just that region. So that's pretty much it for the V-Ray frame buffer. A uh, quick thanks to uh, Digital X Models, where uh, they have some free models available. Check them out. Uh, that's where this one came from. And also CGTextures.com, a massive library of uh, tileable, non-tileable textures of all sorts. Okay, one quick addendum to this video is uh, uh, one more word on the uh, Duplicate to Maya Frame Buffer button. When you hit that, uh, you may get a very large discrepancy. That's the um, that's dumping the uh, V-Ray frame buffer into the Maya frame buffer as a linear image without sRGB compensation. So you see, if I turn sRGB off here, they'll look the same. Obviously, what you'd want is to dump this image converted, and there is a setting for that in the globals. So under V-Ray Common, scroll down, and there's a convert image to sRGB for render view turn that on and you will get a one-to-one -one relationship and anything you save out of the Maya frame buffer will probably be 8-bit uh, if you're using 2010. Um, another quick note is also that any adjustments like exposure compensation or curves that you do in here will also transfer so that's very helpful as well to save out a few versions because you can obviously save them in the in the Maya frame buffer. So there you go. Uh, thanks for watching.